meeting of the Royal Oak Planning Commission to order. Uh, first, let's introduce ourselves, starting to my left. Charlene Douglas, Mayor Pro Tem. Mike Fournier, Mayor. Ann Vara. Tim Twain, <coughs> Community Development Director. Jeff Chase. Eric Kluster. Thank you. We have a quorum. Um, next item uh, is the approval of the minutes for November 14th. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Support? Support. Moved by Douglas, support by Mr. Kluster. Any discussion on the minutes from November 14th? Not seeing. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are approved. Okay, um, next item is item C. This is public comment on non-agenda items. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to um, speak publicly on an item that's not on our agenda? Okay, not seeing any hands. I'll close uh, item C, public comment on non-agenda items, and moving on to old business. Um, this is a zoning or ordinance text amendments for preservation and replacement of the existing trees, Mr. Twing. Um, as we indicated in the staff memo, uh, we've been rather busy the last month, so we haven't had an opportunity to make uh, the revisions uh, that we discussed with the Planning Commission at a prior meeting. So I would ask <coughs> that you uh, uh, consider a resolution to postpone it to the January meeting. Okay. Is there a motion to postpone to January? Motion. Motion by Mayor. Is there support? Support. Support by Mr. Chase. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, this item has been moved to the January meeting. Thank you. Uh, next up under old business is site plan SP171025 to demolish an existing restaurant and construct a five unit, 6,500 square foot commercial building for real retail sales. Uh, Mr. Twing, um, I read the staff, your staff recommendation. Is there, you want to tell um, us about well, this? Well, this is uh, an item that was. Uh, postponed by the Planning Commission uh, directing the petitioner to modify the building uh, and the site plan uh, and the placement of the building. Uh, I, as we've indicated, uh, uh, Planning Department staffs had several inquiries and multiple contacts with the petitioner, <coughs> uh, but we have not received any uh, revised plans as of today. Uh, what I would indicate is the staff told me this afternoon they did get a call from the petitioner that indicated they would have revised plans by the end of this week. Um, I guess uh, that's always a possibility, but uh, it's been postponed a, a couple of times, and uh, it's really up to your discretion whether you want to postpone it for another month. Okay. Um, is there any discussion on this, or is there a motion? Um, <clears throat> the recommendation, I'm not sure if it's a recommendation, but our staff has put together a memo stating if many, many times he's contacted the petitioner with, uh, with no results and, if, and asked him to attend the meeting tonight. Uh, the recommendation may be just to deny this original site plan. Um, but what's the pleasure of the commission? I'll make a motion to deny the site plan. Okay, um, there's a motion to deny. Is there support on that? Support. Support by Mr. Kluser. Any discussion on this? I mean, if they haven't come back this many times, it's... Seems like they don't want to do it. Okay. All those in favor of the motion to deny? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. The uh, petition's been denied. <coughs> <coughs> okay, next item is, uh, this is new business now. Uh, this is our only public hearing for this evening. Um, it's an amendment to special land use and special redevelopment site plan SP 13 0716 to install balconies on three multiple family buildings at 11 Mile and Maxwell Park. Mr. Twing. Uh, the Planning Commission members may recall uh, that you did approve this special <coughs> land use permit and <coughs> site plan as part of a special redevelopment area, uh, one of the former uh, school sites, uh, Longfellow Elementary. Uh, you did approve uh, those three buildings uh, <coughs> for 12 dwelling units as part of that uh, Special redevelopment, and you also granted some uh, relief from uh, some specific uh, setback requirements under the ordinance as part of that. Uh, the petitioner is proposing to add balconies to the sides of <coughs> each of those three um, previously approved uh, units or buildings 
that contain four units apiece. Um, those balconies would encroach into the uh, setbacks that you previously were granted relief from. Uh, you would have to uh, take a similar action if you uh, so choose this evening to approve uh, the addition of the balconies on each side of the three different buildings uh, for those uh, <coughs> waivers. Uh, as we indicated in the report, uh, it basically is a, uh, the east side front yard setback uh, uh, would end up being six feet from Maxwell Avenue right away. It previously was 10. Uh, the minimum west side setback from the property line that separates uh, the Y from this property would end up being roughly uh, 3.7 feet. Uh, I believe previously it was uh, seven, almost eight feet. Uh, and then the minimum distance between the buildings uh, uh, would be seven feet, and previously it was uh, 15. Uh, so those are the changes that are depicted. You'll see on the site plan each one of those balconies. You should also be able to see from the floor plans that those balconies <coughs> are off the kitchens, uh, as well as you can see the elevation uh, that were provided. Uh, so you're looking at uh, basically uh, balconies being added uh, one on the second floor and one on the third floor of each of those units on each side. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Twin? Okay, not seeing is the petitioner here. Okay, no petitioner. Back to the Planning Commission. Any discussion or what's the pleasure of the Commission? <clears throat> These setbacks are being decreased. Sorry. I didn't. Oh, go ahead. The setbacks are being decreased via the balcony. Just yeah, they're, the, the balconies the stick air. out four feet, so they're... <clears throat> and that's so. all the way up encroaching. Right. Ms. Douglas? Um, yeah, I did. I was curious about, I mean, typically when you've got a balcony on an apartment, it's, you know, there's a sliding door and light flooding in and that increases your access to the outdoors. And these are sort of balconies with a, what appears to be a solid pedestrian door leading off them. Um, I, I just, I was curious about the purpose of them. Honestly, I don't have any real objection to the addition of the balconies, despite the encroachment into the setback. Um, but I wish they were here to tell us more about that. Um, I guess that said, I'll make a motion to um, approve the, um, what are we, approving the change to the um, site plan or special land use? Uh, it would be both. You'll, both. You'll, you'll see the three or four contingencies we have listed on uh, page three. So are we doing this in two two moves then? One to approve the special land use and then the site plan? No, the special land use was previously granted. This, you're, what you're doing is modifying the site plan that went along with that. All so right. we'll do it as one motion. All right, so I will move to modify the special land use and the site plan as proposed. There's a motion to approve this uh, modification. Is there support? I'll support. Report by Mr. Chase. Any discussion on this motion? Ms. Douglas. No, I, I mean, I, it doesn't seem like an enormous change. I understand the appeal of any little bit of outdoor space on a, a, a multifamily unit. Um, I, I, when, we, when they proposed this to us, what, what, four years ago? I mean, the, what had preceded it was a proposal for a strip mall there. And when they came into us with, um, you know, residential, um, very consistent with the, the single family behind it, we were very pleased to, to have that proposed, and I'm still pleased. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Not seeing all those in favor of the motion to uh, approve uh, the modification in the, to the special land use and site plan, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Well, actually, I should have opened the public hearing. Oops. So, Mr.
Mr. Twing, what's the protocol? <laughs> um. Can now uh, let's see. Let's have a reconsideration of the motion to reopen. Motion to reconsider. Yes. Support. Support. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, now, now I can open the public <laughs> hearing. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to comment on this? Cannot see. We'll close the public hearing. I apologize to the commission. Um, is there the motion to approve stone on the table? Motion to approve stone on the table. Support. Support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Whew. Get out of that one. Crisis averted. <laughs> Okay, uh, next up is the site plan, SB 171229 to construct a seven level municipal parking structure with 581 spaces on the site of municipal parking lot located at uh, 110 East 11 Mile, Mr. Twain. Um, very briefly, this uh, proposed uh, parking lot, uh, municipal parking lot by the city, our parking deck is uh, to be located in an existing uh, municipal surface lot. Uh, as you indicated in the right up of the deck itself would have uh, some 581 spaces uh, there's also seven spaces proposed off of the public alley to the west uh, it would have access ingress egress to 11 mile along the east side of the proposed structure as well as access ingress egress uh, to uh, uh, second uh, street on the <coughs> south side of the proposed structure um, the design of the, the deck is very similar to the one that's uh, currently being wrapped up, but uh, uh, Second Avenue and uh, or Second Street and uh, Center on the south side of the post office in terms of the exterior. I know Mr. Canal is here from uh, Rich and Associates uh, uh, to give you kind of an overview of the, the deck. Any questions for Mr. Twing before the petitioner? Okay. Sir, your name? Uh, Richard Cannell with the firm of Rich and Associates. So as uh, Mr. Twing indicated, um, the, the, the design of the um, proposed new parking structure is very similar. In fact, it's in identical in, in footprint to the, exist, the, the new uh, structure that's about to open at 2nd and Center Street. Traffic flow is very similar in terms of the circulation through the, the structure. Um, if you can go to the, the next sheet, uh, the ground floor um, will not have, uh, the w one difference is the ground floor will not have any commercial space uh, at this location as it does on the, the second center street garage. Um, so we will, won't have any express ramping going up, so it'll, it's a, a, um, some, somewhat more efficient in terms of the square footage per car space, um, and it's Hopefully, it's cost per car space. Um, the uh, ground floor will have a couple of ancillary rooms, but primarily um, entry exit, as uh, Mr. Twing indicated, uh, will occur at the southwest corner off of 2nd Street and at the southeast corner <coughs> via an access drive on the east side coming off of 11 Mile Road. Um, pretty standard. Uh, vehicular circulation two-way traffic through this through the structure up to the roof it uh, is a grade and six supported so seven total levels and uh, 581 cars thank you mm -hmm. any questions for the petitioner Ms. Douglas on the west uh, facade at ground level, is there any exterior lighting? Um, we haven't gotten developed it that that far, but it, the the intent is to develop some some lighting, uh, accent lighting on that. There are existing um, poles, electrical poles there. We we have to study the 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 light levels that are currently there. What will be left over from uh, existing uh, fixtures and then supplement that with what we'll need on that side of the, the structure. Okay, thanks. Any other questions for the petitioner? Ms. 
Mr. Kluster. Uh, can you elaborate why there there wasn't any consideration for commercial at the at ground floor in this particular location? Um, the direction that we got from from the uh, the planning department was that was not uh, not a requirement or not a desire on this site. Um, certainly, it again it, that commercial space decreases your efficiency and drives your cost up slightly um, because you're not parking on it obviously um, and, and your cost per car space tends to go up um. okay. Thank you. Any other Mr. Chase just from a facade coloring are we determined on what textures colors fake brick are we going with brick panels? Anything? I see it on here. I just right right it's a now small. the right now the intention is to have um, the same or very similar coloration and finishes to the second street. Um, we have to work with the planning department, obviously, on uh, any options because the direction has been, um, you know basically a carbon copy to the second Center Street garage. Um, I think there's opportunity um, here to maybe slightly change that to complement um, the, the colors that are uh, adjacent to this site, um, but we wouldn't deviate very far at all. Maybe one tone slightly in brick color or something just to give it so they're not exact carbon copies but again that that has to be discussed um. okay thank you um, mr. Twain does this this um, does not go to the Commission after this if, if this is approved it's it, it just as far as the site plan it doesn't go to the Commission okay. uh, the Commission's role will be to award any contract to build uh, so they will have input on the structure, but it'll be in a different format rather than site plan approval. Um, maybe I have a question, maybe for the mayor or Ms. Douglas, even um, in terms of operation. This then will this be operated by the the, the DDA or uh, the municipality or who, who? How does that work? With well, I can answer that. Oh, it's, I'm sorry. It, it's going to continue to be operated by the municipality, probably through. The same contractor that runs the other decks or manages the I other see. deck, which is currently Park Right. Okay. Uh, but it would be a city owned uh, facility. Okay. We collect the fees. Okay. We collect the revenues. We do hire a professional firm, bid it out to manage it. To manage it, okay. you know, to make sure the maintenance is being done, to have people staffed to collect the fees and deal with mechanical issues and things of that nature. Have there been any decisions made about? Um, Operation in terms of uh, I know that when Rochester built theirs like the first two hours is free And then after that you pay is, is there any discussions at the uh, Commission level on that level yet or yeah, we're I, not there yet? I think I think that's going to be more of a comprehensive discussion for the downtown that we're going to have you know with the DDA and okay. um, other community members uh, not just in the context of the new parking facilities we're seeing in the downtown but also in the context of new technology that we're seeing in the marketplace that can, you know, everyone clamors for park mobile and everyone clamors for, you know, seamless parking and things of this nature. So um, I think I think the topics overlap. Okay. Uh, but I don't think anything we do here isn't going to, at least what I see, prohibit any future action to do two hours free or, you know, put a cool technology in, use another service provider, things like that. I think okay. the design is flexible to all of those things. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm oh, not you're the correct. expert. Absolutely I'm just, correct. The, yeah. the okay. current technology that we're installing in the second center street uh, structure will have some of those flexibilities, the, the equipment, the updated equipment that uh, providers are offering today offer a wide range of opportunities on how you want to operate your, your facilities. Okay, thank you. I just, I, I know we're a little off topic of the site plan, but I think it's important to have that discussion. If, if this isn't going to be in front of the commission at some level, I think the public, uh, it's nice for the public to understand if we're owning this, how we're going to operate it, so. Well, it's a fair question because yeah. if the site plan impacts our ability to be agile in the future. It's an right. important question, I think. So, good question. Okay. All right. And any other 
discussion or questions for the petitioner or Mr. Twing on this? Okay, not seeing either. This is not a public hearing, so we can entertain a motion. Uh, basically, you've got uh, in the staff report there are um, eight uh, suggested contingencies or, or uh, um, acknowledgments uh, from the Planning Commission in terms of uh, compliance. Uh, one is in regard to uh, provisions about uh, the ground floor use and uh, uh, retail or non. Uh, second is any building that's over 40 feet in height, uh, the Planning Commission does have discretion of terms of whether there would be any uh, setback required for the portions above that. Obviously, that would significantly impact the configuration and layout of a parking deck. Uh, item three is in regards to corner vision clearance setbacks at driveways and intersections. Uh, I would point out that the one at 11 mile on the east side of the property, uh, the exit uh, lanes are, are, are lane away from the building, uh, so I don't really envision that there's any site clearance issues at, at 11 mile. Uh, the, the inbound lane uh, is on the uh, west side of that driveway, so the exit lanes are, are far enough away. Um, the exit at the southwest corner on the second street um, uh, would be the one that you would uh, be looking at in terms of deeming that it's adequate to, uh, in terms of that site corner clearance. Um, trees being removed and uh, uh, replaced, um, you should be able to see the landscape plan that's proposed. Several of the trees that are on the west side of the library um, have already been removed because of disease. Uh, based on the placement of the sidewalk, there will be a few more that are removed um, as part of that, as well as all of the trees that are currently in the um, surface parking lot uh, uh, median areas. Uh, the rest of the contingencies are really standard contingencies about construction of the, of the site. Thank you. With that, is there um, a motion? Ms. Douglas. Yeah, I'm going to move um, approval of the slight plan, but I want to add a contingency, number nine or something, um, that specifies that they the uh, building will have lighting, uh, uh, pedestrian uh, lighting along the west facade. We've talked about the adjacent office building and wanting to turn that into more of a place. Um, and in fact, the developer changed some of the, the design of that, their west facade, to make it a little a more attractive, a little friendlier. Um, and I definitely want to encourage, um, you know, make people feel safe when they're walking through this alley. Okay, is there a support on that with the contingency number nine? Support. Support by Mr. Chase. Any discussion on this motion? Um, Mayor. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of this logically since we are the petitioner. Um, I think there would be, I mean, I agree with the concept that we need to have lighting in the alley. Um, is there something that, and maybe I'll ask Mr. Twing this, is there something in the site plan that, does that need to be included in the site plan or is that something that, you know, the city commission could move forward with in a change order or in the, you know, design phase? Is, it some, is that lighting critical to the, to what we have in front of us today? If we were just to, to decide later to put lighting in there, is that something that would have to be approved by the planning commission? Um, well, to answer it, I guess, in two fashions, I think it's totally appropriate to add it here okay. uh, as part of the Planning Commission. Having said that, if you didn't add it here and the City Commission wanted to do it as part of the construction, you could do it there then too, but I think it's fine to add it here. Uh, it gives clear direction on that you do want some lighting. Uh, the, the design will then proceed with uh, providing that. Again, it'll be designed pursuant to ordinance requirements in terms of shielding and directed downward right, those types right, of things but right. uh, so as long um, as that lighting doesn't violate any of our existing yeah. ordinances or need any variances associated if it complies with everything then adding fine. it here gives clarity right that um, you want it item six somewhat 
identifies the idea that we're anticipating light fixtures on the, on the site. There will probably be some on the roof that aren't de being depicted currently that will have to be designed and approved. So, But I think um, it's fine to add it here. Okay, in the estimation, I don't see it as being a material cost impact that, you know, we have two members of the commission, of which is not a majority of the commission, making a cost adjustment that's significant. So I feel that in the broad context of the project, this expense would not, I don't want to say it would be a rounding error, but it would not, you know, create a significant hazard as far as uh, that's concerned. So, and it is the privilege of this planning commission to do that. So. Thank you for clarifying it. I'll support it. Any other discussion? Okay, not seeing all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, next, item three. <clears throat> site plan 17, 12, 30. This is a site plan to construct a two-story municipal office building, the Royal Oak City Hall, on the site of municipal parking lot at 211 South Troy Street. Mr. Twain. Uh, I'm going to let uh, Jason Krieger and the petitioner walk through their presentation first, and then I can come back and touch on the... Sounds good. Let me get down to their presentation first. You make me work for it. Yeah. I am. <clears throat> All right, good evening. My name is Jason Krieger with Krieger Clad Architects. I have Jeff Klatt with me in the audience, my business partner. And we're here tonight to present Royal Oak City Hall. Uh, thanks for having us here this evening. We prepared a brief PowerPoint slideshow that's a little bit more graphically friendly than just looking at drawings mm -hmm. that were submitted <clears throat> as required. So what, what we want to do first is just touch on what we've done to date, just so that, I mean, obviously we've been working with the Planning Commission, we want to make sure that, or I'm sorry, the City Commission, we want to make sure that the Planning Commissioners are up to date on what's happened uh, so far, so that they realize that we're not operating in a vacuum, but rather we're working with the City and Plant Moran all the way through. So on the next slide, what you'll see is uh, we've had, for a while, we've had numerous meetings with City Department heads. There has been a survey monkey with the City staff that we've uh, reacted to. Uh, reacted to. We've worked with the uh, planning department and engineering department when designing the site. We've also had two uh, public work sessions where there was comments, feedback, and all of these things culminated into the plan that we have this evening. The next slide is some brief project data. <clears throat> Basically, we have about 124 parking spaces on the site. 90 spaces are standard parking spaces, six are barrier free. And we have 28 city staff spark parking spaces that are dedicated just for city vehicles. Uh, the square footage is 36,000 square feet, and the height, uh, total height to the top of the tower is about 48. The second floor parapet is 35 foot eight. The next slide is the context map that shows you where the proposed location is going to be. We did meet with the city commission, and we looked at numerous options. This was the site that was chosen. It's across from the uh, Future Park. It's south of the Farmer's Market, and it's right on the corner of Troy and 3rd Street. <clears throat> the next slide shows what will be the ultimate layout of the master plan. So you can see that the building is shifted a bit to the north on that site <clears throat> where we have parking to the east of it and then parking to the south. The south is where the city vehicles would go, so you can see that it would be a bit more secured. Uh, the proposed parking deck is to the west of the library, and then the Central Park, which is still yet to be designed, is right across from City Hall. So the site that we have for the future City Hall was chosen because it creates a boundary around this park. It allows us to front it along the street and create a pedestrian environment. We felt that it was just the best location for this building. The parking to the east, as I want to mention, is still something that would be used uh, by farmers market on the weekends. So all of these things have been considered and thought through. <clears throat> the next slide is a little more technical looking. That's our site plan from our uh, civil engineers. <coughs> One thing that I want to point out is that the, slight ha or the site has a uh, grade difference of almost four feet as you go from the west to the east. So what you'll notice on some of these pictures coming up is that we have some ramps and steps along the east side of the building. 
I actually think that it adds some drama and uh, visual interest to the facade. Along the uh, west, it's all at grade and level. Okay, so we, that's why, as partly why we position the ADA spaces along the uh, northeast side of the building, it's because it's closest to the ramp. They're also in a great uh, position to serve the farmer's market if need be. The parking lot to the south that has the city vehicles that also has what would be the primary entrance for uh, city staff. And then to the north, there's another entrance for uh, city staff members that have their offices up in that area. The uh, dumpsters are along to the south east corner. There's already a dumpster there that serves the court. We would add another one for City Hall. And then we, we looked at loading and unloading. We had traffic studies uh, done by our engineers that show uh, box trucks, a little bit larger trucks, things that would uh, have deliveries going to City Hall. And they meet the turning radiuses that would be required. The next slide shows a landscape plan provided by our engineers. <clears throat> Basically, we're completing the streetscape around uh, from the west around to the north, and then a little bit to the south of that, and then we have parking, and then we have some trees in the parking lot as well. The next slide is our architectural site plan. I've already touched on some of the items that are bulleted there. One thing that I think is important to mention, too, that you'll see is this is really a two-sided building. We have the park on the west, as you know, and we have parking on the east. So what you'll see is that we have a central spine that goes through this building. Uh, we want to make sure that we're uh, looking at the parking lot as well as the park. So that, that will uh, explain why the facade is the way it is when you see it. The next slide shows the first floor. <clears throat> so now, as you're looking at this, the park is on the top of the image. The parking is on the bottom of the image. So we have a central spine that goes through the building. That's where the main counters are for the most uh, regularly visited departments. You're going to have community development, uh, assessor, clerk, treasurer. That's where the counters are, and that's where the public would mostly be. We designed this building so that the ground floor could be locked down during commission meetings. So if you were to park in the east and come in the main lobby there, which is on the bottom side of that image, the pink area, that's the commission chambers. That area can be locked down so people don't wander through uh, City Hall <coughs> during commission meetings. Right now, you know, you kind of go through the whole uh, building, and that's a security risk. Go to the next slide. The second floor shows the rest of the offices. Uh, there would be a key fob or some sort of security uh, control mechanism to control people from getting upstairs. But if you're an employee, you'd have access throughout the whole building. Again, we have our central corridor uh, to get the stairs on, on the east and west. And then we have the offices on the north and south. The program, uh, the, the ground floor is larger because of the program needs. And then it, it uh, tapers in as you go to the second floor. This is the lower level. The lower level allows us to put our mechanical items down here and additional storage. Uh, even though the technology is coming into play, there's less paper, there was still uh, some need of some storage for city, for city Hall. And it was also a great spot, like I said, for us to put our mechanical and electrical services as they come into the building. We did not do a full basement because it's very expensive, so we designed what we would need. There was probably a little bit of room for growth in there. We positioned it where it was because there was a high water table. So as we moved to the southeast, the water table actually went lower because our building was a little bit higher. So it helps us save money and it creates less risk down the road for water intrusion. The next four slides are exterior elevations of the building. So we're really, um, we were inspired by uh, the, the traditional buildings that surround this site. We wanted a timeless design. So we have brick, cast stone, metal panels, and glass are the primary building elements. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we borrowed some elements from the courthouse, the, the um, post office we think is really nice, and other buildings in town. So the goal here is for this to feel like it belongs in downtown Royal Oak. You go to the next couple slides, Tim. 
that would be, uh, I guess, the east, or I'm sorry, probably the north elevation. That's the next one. Is it south? North, yep. That faces the park. That faces the south. Next slide. In the next couple of slides, we have some renderings of what the building would look like. You can see there that that's the steps that would be on the east side of the building and the ramps. And then we have two slides that show it's, it's a work in progress, but it gives you an idea of what the interiors <coughs> are, are working towards. So again, we want to make sure that the building looks continuous from the inside and the outside. So something some that's a bit more traditional, but has some, you know, obviously the modern amenities and some modern flair to it. And finally, there's a photometric plan. So th that photometric plan really just showed the lights. We have some uh, sconces around the building. It has a full cutoff as you go around, but that does not have is the parking lot lighting that is yet to be designed, but that would be designed accordingly and within the ordinance standards. So. Thank you. We have that for anything? Okay. Thank you. So we have. Appreciate you. that. All nice right. presentation. Uh, Mr. Twain, did you want to? Well, very briefly, I can run through the staff report. Um, <clears throat> Um, far as <laughs> moving forward, if the planning commission saw fit to approve it, um, item one is in regards to the uh, orientation in the, of the building, the height width ratio requirements under the ordinance uh, that your review is uh, uh, believes the uh, proposed building meets those. Uh, item two is in regards to the uh, landscape plan. Um, the number of trees being removed and, and, and replaced in, in the, uh, on the site. As we indicate, there's 26 new trees replacing 17 that are being removed. Uh, item three, uh, given the current configuration of the lot or, or properties, um, we are going to need to uh, combine uh, parcels as well as vacate uh, some portions of Second Street and uh, Hamilton Court in order to build across them. Uh, so that's item three of the contingencies. Item four really related to the waste receptacle enclosure and trying to determine whether that's the best location for it or not uh, based on what it's uh, serving and access. So we've left it in there that that would be determined as we move through the site connectivity plans, which are a separate uh, uh, set of site plans that deal with things outside the building envelopes. Um, there was some concern that this enclosure area would uh, have some visibility uh, impacts of people leaving and coming in from that south uh, exit. So we want an opportunity to continue to look at it. Items five, six, seven, eight, and nine are standard contingencies for all site plans. Thank you. Okay, so do we have any questions for Mr. Twing or the petitioner at this point? Mm -hmm. Ms. Douglas. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out where the 17 trees are. There are evergreens along Troy Street. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Most of the trees there along Troy. Uh, there's probably a f uh, yes. Uh, let me see if I can find the original survey. Third and Troy, it looks like. <laughs> Most of them will be in Troy. Bouncing around here. There are probably a few on uh, Third Street where there is a part of the proposal is to have parallel parking. We're losing a couple. Uh, there are several being removed along Troy Street where the building is pushed out towards Troy. Um, I think 
that's the majority of them. So there's, I mean, because I'm just looking at, at Google Street View here along, what is that, Third Street, there seems to be a tall tree there. Do we know what species that is? Uh, well, the one that's staying, the, the largest one on the site plan, if you look there, there's a bump out that in the right of way that tree will stay. There's, oh, good. There's one on each side of it that are being removed. Right. Okay, that's good. Glad to hear that. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Kluster. Yeah, can we, um, can either the the petitioner or um, Mr. Twing, can you speak to the desire for surface parking? Um, and just earlier this meeting, we discussed the 581 spaces going in just down the street. It seems like there's a, a large quantity of surface parking as part of this project. Can we discuss that desire at all? Well, I, I guess I'll answer as best I can. You know, there's always been a need for parking around this area, surface parking, especially the service, the farmer's market. You're right, there's a considerable amount of parking going in that garage. On the weekends, the farmer's market gets rather busy, so we tried to maximize as much as we could to support that. That's really where that came from. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I think also, too, if I may interject, I mean, for uh, service vehicles for the city, you know, you have building and code and everybody having quick access to their vehicle to and from the their offices to go out and do the work they have to do within the community. <coughs> I think there's also a, a need to have some surface mm -hmm. level parking there Correct. as well. Yeah. As opposed to having to walk to the garage and, you know, eat up valuable time. Mm -hmm. I have a couple questions. Sure. Um, so uh, a landscaping question. To the south, um, where the Royal Oak fleet is going to be parked. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not seeing any trees or landscaping along that uh, street. And I'm just wondering if there's an opportunity to, to do that. We scroll down a little bit. Uh, if you're it. referring to along uh, Third Street in this area, you have uh, an existing situation with the parking lot and a wall, uh, sidewalk in place, and what's being added there is some parallel spots on the north side. I don't believe there was, the, th the thought being that there wasn't enough space to add additional uh, greenery in that area. Okay. Now along Troy Street, I believe there is some. Uh, there is greenery along Troy Street. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, I, I'm just thinking because I know that when we had Beaumont through here, we um, one, one of the things that we actually, Ms. Douglas brought it up, that we like to see along Coolidge is that they buffered the parking from the street with um, some additional landscaping. And sure. if there's an opportunity to do that here, I think we'd certainly like to see greenery rather than a fleet, view, a, a fleet of vehicles. So... If you could just make a note of, of that's something that you know might be okay. desirable. That's just my opinion. Uh, my second, um, and I know this is a municipal design, but I'm wondering if you've looked at anything uh, for the green infrastructure for stormwater as well as lead standards. Glad you asked. Yes, we have. Okay. So, <laughs> can you speak on that? Or? Yeah, I, I okay. can in my, my limited knowledge of it, but there will be permeable pavers uh, in this parking lot. I just met with Matt, Matt Callahan today. And uh, <clears throat> I, I don't know if I could point, but basically, as the parking lot sheets from west to east, okay. okay, there will be permeable pavers in the center aisle, a strip of them there, and okay. then also a strip along the far east side. Okay. And, and then also, I believe there was some along the far south as well. So okay. I don't know the quantity that it, you know, would, would take up stormwater-wise, but they are absolutely planning, planning on that right now. Okay. I just have the opinion that if this is our building, we should lead by you know, yeah. design, and we've been talking about it for a long time. I'm not sure what the soil type is here, you know, if it's, it if it's type, type sandy or sandy. crummy or... Sand. Sand. Like perfect for it's all sand. Is yeah, it sand? sand? Well, yeah. there you go. <laughs> yeah, so. 
But yeah. So that's a great opportunity yep. then to address you know stormwater on our own on our own site. We're, we're to my knowledge, based on what I heard today, we are designing that. In there. Okay. Yep. And there's also geothermal that's going in the east. So far as planned, geothermal would be in the east parking lot as well. Okay. Those were my comments. Any other comments or questions or any for petition of Mr. Twain? Okay. Not seeing any. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the site plan and the contingencies as noted. Motion by Mr. Chase. Is there support? Support by Ms. Douglas. Any discussion on this motion? Not seeing all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Site plan approved. <clears throat> nice job. Thank you. Great drawings. Yeah, looks good. Nice brick display, Mr. Clatter. <clears throat> okay, so moving right along, uh, another site plan, SP 17-1231. This is to construct a second story addition to a multiple family building at 316 Mary Avenue, Mr. Twing. Uh, this site is on the uh, north side of Mary Avenue uh, between North Lafayette, uh, the dead end of North Lafayette and North Washington Avenue. Uh, there are three existing units uh, on the site. Uh, the petitioner, as you indicated, is proposing to add a second floor and three more units uh, for a total of six. Uh, the site plan does depict uh, uh, six uh, proposed off-street parking spaces along the north or back side as soon as it rolls up here. Um, you will note from our uh, staff report uh, there are uh, four variances that we've identified based on this plan that the Zoning Board of Appeals would have to grant. Uh, that's assuming the Planning Commission uh, uh, takes a favorable action this evening. Uh, the first is in regards to the uh, required lot area for the proposed number of units. Uh, the second is in regards to the south front, east side, and west side uh, setback requirements. Uh, the third is uh, by code, each unit is required to have two spaces, and again, they're proposing uh, six. Uh, and then it is a, a non conforming uh, structure currently, uh, so D would be the expansion of a non-conforming structure. Uh, assuming, again, the Planning Commission wants to move forward with this, uh, item two is in regards to design and materials. Uh, three is in, re in regards to the uh, exterior uh, storage for refuge and requirement that it be uh, screened. Uh, find a site plan here. Item four is in regards to uh, the six-foot masonry screening wall along the north. Uh, we're recommending that that uh, extend along the west property line uh, pursuant to zoning ordinance provision. Item five, uh, you will note on the site plan that uh, uh, there are trees along the uh, north side in close proximity to the uh, proposed wall. Uh, that item is in regards to if any of those are removed, they should be replaced pursuant to ordinance requirements. Uh, the remaining contingencies are standard contingencies uh, uh, in terms of uh, performance bonds and uh, uh, other ordinance requirements. Thank you, Mr. Twain. Any questions? Not seeing any. Is the, is the petitioner here? <clears throat> Good evening. I'm Steve from Stucky Vitality Architects. We're the petitioner. Welcome. Um, so our main goal with this project development is to really mesh this building into the existing neighborhood. There's been a lot of development from um, single-story bungalows and, or, and ranches to develop a two-story house housing. So. Um, our goal is really to introduce this building into the fabric of the neighborhood. Um, we've been working with the Planning uh, Commission 
regarding different materials and the design aesthetic to really try to mesh this better. Um, we are very flexible with working with colors and different materials, if that's something that the Planning Commission sees, sees necessary, excuse me. Um, yeah. Is that it? Okay. Any questions for the petitioner? Tim, I've got a question. Um, could you uh, walk us through the, you've got the contingencies for the zoning board. So if this were to receive a favorable <coughs> approval this evening, they would go right to the zoning board from here? Well, they still would have to make application. Um, okay. Those are the ones based on this plan that the zoning board would have to grant. Okay. Again, that's assuming you want to approve the site plan with those deviations. Right. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, Mr. Kluster. Yeah, can you, is it possible for you to elaborate on the exist, the non-conforming status of the existing structure? How, exact, exactly how is it non-conforming in its current state? Uh, well, the same setbacks, because it's a multifamily building, would apply to the existing structure. So um, it would be required to have 25-foot uh, setbacks uh, to the building. Um, I didn't run the numbers, but I also believe three units, it would need <coughs> a larger lot area for the original three units. Okay. So it's non-conforming in a sense of what's already there. Mr. Twain, is this the only non-conforming uh, site in this neighborhood? Or there, There's an apartment building and then there's some single-family homes. Well, this site and the site to the east are both zoned multifamily. Okay. Whether they're non-conforming in terms of requirements, I can say this one is. Whether okay. the apartment to the east is, I don't know. Okay. Thank you. So Mr. Your, Chase. your plan is just to take the top off and go up with leaving the existing four walls? That's correct. The existing first level would remain the same. Um, new finishes on the interior, but the exterior walls would all remain the same. And then we would build directly on top of that. Any other questions or discussion? If not, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the site plan. And I guess, do we give them the approval to go to the zoning board for their variances? No, you just approve it based on those contingencies. OK. I'll make the motion to approve the site plan uh, with the contingencies as noted by the staff. Motion is there support. Support by Ms. Douglas. Any discussion on this motion? Ms. Douglas? Uh, yeah, I, I'll just say that um, I think there are areas of our city where there's demand for housing in our city, particularly rental housing, um, and um, not a lot of places to expand it. And so where we can build on density in an appropriately zoned area um, in what I think is going to be an attractive improvement to the existing building, I think we are um, meeting necessary demand in a way that is still respectful of the, the street that it's on. And so I'm happy to support this. Okay, not seeing any of the discussion. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is approved. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Okay, this is the last item under new business. Um, that's a site plan, SP 171232, to construct a two story. A uh, 30,510 square foot building and expand self storage facility, public storage at 5060 Coolidge Highway, Mr. Twin. Uh, this site is on uh, the east side of Coolidge, uh, mm -hmm. north of 14. Um, the site in, that's <coughs> particularly in front of you is 4.86 acres. Um, the remainder of the site's already developed with uh, 
some 461 existing uh, storage units on that adjacent parcel. Uh, the petitioner is proposing to build a three-story uh, building, uh, approximately 33 feet to the roof, some 30,510 square feet uh, with uh, 861 additional uh, rental units uh, based on their, or storage units uh, based on their floor plan. So the total for the site would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,322 total units. Uh, based on uh, uh, zoning ordinance parking requirements, there uh, would require 29 spaces. Uh, they are indicating on the site plan uh, uh, 33. Uh, there is no specific setback requirements uh, other than what the Planning Commission uh, may choose to approve as part of uh, site plan approval. And the site and those setbacks do vary as you uh, look at the proposed building uh, and where it sits on the site. Um, in terms of contingencies, uh, if Planning Commission wanted to approve it, uh, one would be they maintain uh, all required operational standards for the self storage under the ordinance. Uh, two, that both parcels, uh, both the existing and the uh, uh, proposed new development uh, be combined uh, uh, because of their proximity and uh, shared parking, uh, that requirement. Item three, uh, I guess I should elaborate a little on, there's an existing billboard on site uh, that was approved through a, a settlement between the city and the billboard company. As part of this, they're proposing to move that billboard um, it's not part of this specific site plan um, as far as your approval, um, but that settlement release required that it comply with the size placement type thing. So that would come um, bef uh, through uh, approval at some later date. Uh, so item three is just an acknowledgement that the uh, existing billboard is going to be re relocated. Items four, five, six, seven, and eight are standard contingencies uh, under the uh, ordinance requirements. Thank you, Mr. Twing. Any questions for Mr. Twing? Not seeing it. Is the petitioner here? Yes. <clears throat> Would you like to add anything to the staff report? I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm here to answer questions. I probably don't have a whole lot to add. Um, Your name, please? Uh, Dan Matula with Public Storage. Okay, thank and you. I'm here with Derek Leary from Kimley Horn. Thank you. Any questions for this petitioner? No. Okay, not seeing. Is there a motion? Motion by Ms. Douglas. Yes, I'll move approval of the proposal. Is there support? Support. Support by Mr. Chase. Any discussion? Who verifies the billboard relocation and everything? Us? This, like our well, when they come in for permits, it's going to have to get reviewed and approved. So we'll verify it at that time. It's just not part of this submission. Okay. Not seeing any of the discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Congratulations. I remember that billboard. Yeah. Very well. Okay. Moving into other business. Uh, this is a sign variance 171213 request to install a monument sign for assisted living senior housing facility Royal Oak House at 1900 North Washington Avenue with a variance to allow a monument sign for institutional use without frontage on a major street. Mr. Twain. <coughs> um, this uh, property is not in any uh, sign, uh, designated sign area. Uh, therefore, it uh, needs to uh, comply with all the required standards uh, for signs located uh, uh, in any of those so non-designated areas. Uh, in that case, the proposed um, uh, monument style sign it does comply with the uh, minimum standards uh, in terms of uh, size, height, placement. 
Um, however, it does not comply with a provision that indicates that the monument signs for institutional use is much beyond a major street. As we indicated in the report, a major street is defined by uh, a right of way greater than 66 feet. Uh, in this case, uh, Washington Avenue, uh, which is the North Washington, which the sign is located on, is only 60 feet. Mary Avenue is only uh, 50 feet in right away width. Therefore, uh, it was denied based on that by the building department. So that's the variance request that's in front of you is to allow a monument style sign for an institutional use uh, at a location without major street frontage. Thank you, Mr. Twing. Any questions? Petitioner here. Your name, sir? I'm Terry Clark from Edmond London and Associates. I'm here to represent um, our firm and the owner of our Assured Senior Living Group slash Royal Oak House. Thank you. No problem. Would you like to add to the well, staff report? The, 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 kind of the preponist was um, when the owners purchased the property, there was a ground sign on there, um, in our opinion, not very pretty, um, but there was a ground sign. And as we decided to redevelop the property, we initially just kind of assumed we would be able to keep the ground sign. Um, obviously, after we submitted for site plan approval, it was discovered, obviously, nonconformance due to the, you know, major frontage streets. Um, but as we continue to move forward, being that this is a senior facility, we felt the need to kind of try to pertain a ground sign to, number one, help wayfinding for the residents, visitors, um, with respect that the entrance to this facility is on the north side, not visible from Mary Street, not visible so much from Washington Street. So we were essentially trying to help way find people to that front entrance by giving this monument sign along Washington. Um, we did take consideration into obviously being this is a residential neighborhood, we didn't want to do anything with heavy lighting. So we did do some small ground, um, ground mounted lights to kind of provide a light to it. But again, we didn't want to do any illuminated signs trying to respect the residential neighborhood that we were in. Okay. Any questions for the petitioner? Is this a illuminated sign? It, it's not illuminated. The only illumination standard. the only illumination is going to be a ground light ground up light. to it. So obviously at night it could be seen. Sorry, I was looking at something else. Um I'm looking at the um is there, is there a sign there right now? There initially, about, say, a year ago, yes. What, is it white? Uh, or was it white? The original ground sign looked like that. Okay, thank you. And it was located at more sort of the corner of Marion, Washington. Okay. Uh, how high is this sign, Tim? Um... Uh, Five feet. Five feet, okay. It's got almost uh, 24 and a half square feet, and okay. it's set back 10 feet from the west property line. Okay. And you want to put this in the in the exact spot that the old one was? No. Uh, Again, the old one is I'm at not the corner. It. It's right. It's right here. Just south of the driveway, right here. Okay. I'm pretty good at reading site plans, but this is... <laughs> oh, there he is. Okay. What's the material in this? Brick. Okay. It's brick material to match the building, and then the sign itself is going to be an aluminum panel. Okay. Any other questions for the petitioner? Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the sign variance. I think this is, to our points, a lot more of a wayfinding sign. It's kind of in the back area, and they're improving the building, and they need to draw attention to it, and it's kind of in a bad situation there. So I don't have any problem with it. It's not like it's a LED flashing type of sign. So. Okay. Motion by Mr. Chase. Is there support? Support. Support by Mr. Kluster. Any discussion on this motion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Congratulations, you have a sign. Thank you for your consideration. Have a great day. You too. Okay, moving right along. We have another sign variance, SV 1712-14. It's a request to install wall and window signs for retail store Orvis at 29500 Woodward Avenue uh, with variances to allow five wall signs on the west front, north side, south side, east, rear facades, a waiver of a square footage, and allow window signs to cover 100% of the window area in the, f in the west front facade, Mr. Twink. Uh, this, this property is located in sign area two. Uh, as you indicated, uh, the petitioner is proposing to install four new uh, wall signs on each side of the building. Each, each facade already has one existing wall sign that would remain after the four new ones are installed. Ordinance requirements in the sign ordinance limit, limit it to one wall sign per facade. Uh, that's why you see the uh, item A <coughs> Uh, requesting a variance to allow five wall signs. Uh, the maximum square footage is 100 square feet. Uh, the five signs on the north facade would result in uh, slightly uh, over that of some 0.44 square feet and the petitioner is seeking a variance uh, uh, from that for the north side of the building. The last item is in regards to window signage, uh, which the sign ordinance and sign area two allows up to 15% on the uh, west facade. Uh, the petitioner is proposing to cover the, all the windows or 100% uh, percent with uh, uh, window signage to, uh, display. So those are the variances that are listed, uh, and those are right in front of you for their request. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Twain? Is the petitioner here? Hi, Alan Chico, Fast Signs of Birmingham. Welcome. What they're requesting here is uh, to add some dimensional uh, letters. They're non-illuminated PVC letters. I believe they're an inch thick. They'll all be peg mounted to the building. Uh, on all four sides of the building. They already have existing Orvis signs on all four sides of the building. Is that it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Any questions for the petitioner? Mayor? Yeah. The existing, I mean, as it relates to the uh, window signage, if I remember today, existing, they have like shadow boxes or not shadow boxes, but a built-in displays. They don't have, remind me what's on. I believe they have built-in displays. So the windows are kind of covered, uh, covered already and they're looking to replace those graphics. Any other questions for the petitioner? So the wording is the only things that we're adding. The men's, women's, fly fishing, the parts underneath it are considered the window graphic, or is that already there? The, like the canopy? Yeah. Uh, yeah, those are Oh, that's the existing canopy. awnings. Yep. That's what that is. Okay. So the canopies are there, and, and the words Orvis are there. They want to add window pictures, men's, women's, fly fishing, and dogs. Is correct. that correct? Okay. Ms. Douglas. So looking at just the Google Street View here, um, it appears that there's already, so you've got one, two, you've got five d windows here, and it appears that there's already a graphic in the center one, or at least there was a year ago. Yes. Um, Mr. Twing, has that been approved? Is that? I don't know off the top of my head whether it was approved previously. I don't, I don't think so, not under our I don't remember. Tenure. I think they just did it. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for the petitioner? Is anybody from Orvis here? Or 
Not that I know of, no. no. I don't think anybody showed up. Okay. So, I don't, I'm, it's a lot of variances. Um, I'm struggling with that. Me too. Yeah. Maybe they'll be the first to speak. Mayor, please. Yeah, I guess the thing I'm struggling with is, you know, the complete coverage of the windows. Obviously, the building is, you know, designed at a previous planning commission when this was built. And as we look at the future of Woodward and walkability and things like that, we're moving buildings closer to the road, closer to the sidewalk. And our strategy over the next 50, 100, 10, 20 years, you name it, is you know to continue to make sure that you know we don't have a series of mini strip malls all over town, right? That we want to have this this feel for every neighborhood of, of walkability and, and good planning measure. And I feel that um, by offering this variance on the windows, covering the windows completely, it kind of draws away from that vision that we have for the community that we're working towards <coughs> incrementally, um, almost a step backwards in a way. Um, I don't, I'm curious what my colleagues think about the signs that say men's, women's, fly fishing, dogs. I mean, from an aesthetic perspective, I mean, I don't have an opinion one way or the other, but um, I think the window uh, signs really give me, again, a little bit of heartburn considering, you know, what we're trying to do with, um, it, it essentially turns it into more of a billboard than, you know, the facade of a building. And that's what I struggle with. I um, I agree. I think one of the things that makes this building special is because it just says Orvis. And I think that if we had more designs like this along Woodward, it would be much more attractive corridor, clean things up. Orvis is a brand in itself. It's the only store in Michigan except uh, there's one in Grand Rapids. So it's a brand in itself, and it's a destination for people. Um, I struggled with the variances. I struggled with cluttering up with more signs I, I i don't i don't buy the wayfind wayfinding argument i think orvis is orvis and if you know what you want you're going to go to orvis um we were really um pretty clear on that shell gas station that went in about uh, denying any any window signage on that and we actually granted them an additional uh, set of signs so they would vacate the window signs to make sure that's stays clean and they've done that which I like so I'd like to try to stay consistent with that. Ms. Douglas? So yeah the problem I have with the window signs is they've shown us some pretty pictures <laughs> here um, but I don't know that I mean we can't be sure that those are the pretty pictures they'll wind up with nor do we really have a prob process to regulate that. I mean if our if our um, code enforcement department drove by and there was a picture of I don't know, the Eiffel Tower or something not matching or Orbis or even something inappropriate, there's really no way to regulate those window signs. Um, so that's my concern with, uh, that's why I would oppose them. Um, I'm less um, concerned about the addition of the additional words, men's, women's, fly fishing, dogs, because, I mean, net amount of signage on that facade still remains close to what we permit. Um, so I, I could go either way on that, but I, the window signs just aren't going aren't gonna to make it with me. So I'll try a motion and we'll see what happens. Um, I'm going to move to um, approve the, how is it worded here? Da, da, da. Um, approve the variance for the new wall signs on all sides of the building, but to not approve the window signs at all. So you're doing A and B and not C. Where are I? I've lost, I lost myself. The, the lead-in subject you're doing, you're approving A and B but not C. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. okay, so there's been a motion by Ms. Douglas to approve the five wall signs on the west, north, south, and east rear facades and waive 0.44 square foot of maximum permitted 100 square foot wall sign area 
and there's been support by the mayor. Any discussion on this motion? Mr. Chase. Uh, I, I'll be supporting the motion. I think that the, the wall signs itself kind of equals out. The, the facade looks a little bit empty right now, architecturally speaking, and by adding that, it's kind of matching the building next to it over each window. So I don't really have a problem with that. And I think that the wall, the window signs are, uh, like she said, it's hard to regulate in a little bit too much. So I'll be supporting the motion. Any other discussion? Yeah, I mean, I, I struggle a little bit with allowing four extra signs per facade. Um, but when, when you look at the overall sign area, you're within a, a, you know, a fraction of, of the allowable. Um, so again, I, I think I'll, I'll support the motion as it stands with allowing the signage and denying the, the window graphics. And I'll kind of repeat the sentiment of you know, the, the character that we want to maintain along Woodward and promote walkability and you know, having doors and storefronts along Woodward do that and blocking those off with graphics and turning them into, you know, you know signage doesn't promote that sort of character along Woodward. Well, as I stated before, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll oppose this motion. I, I like the brand. I like the building the way it is. I think too, much, too many signs is too much clutter, so I will be voting against this. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Four to one. It passes. Okay, next. Um, sign variants 17, 12, 15. Uh, request to install wall signs for self storage facility, public storage 50, 60 Coolidge Highway. Uh, let's see, a variance to allow three wall signs on the north facade and allow prohibited projecting signs, wall signs projecting beyond 12 inches from the building on the north facade. Mr. Twing. Uh, well, as you indicated, uh, those are the variants being requested. The property is in sign area two. Uh, the petitioner is proposing to install uh, wall signs on the west, north, uh, south facades of the building. Each uh, wall sign would have an area of uh, approximately 90.7 square feet. Two other uh, signs are proposed on uh, the north side of the building uh, on, the, on canopies. Uh, with additional square footage, as we've indicated. Uh, one wall sign with no more than 100 square feet is what's permitted on each facade. Uh, therefore, the variance is necessary for three wall signs on that north facade, as you indicated, uh, and are, are depicted on the, uh, the drawing uh, I have up on the screen. Additionally, uh, wall signs may not project more than 12 inches uh, from the building facade. Uh, if they do, they're considered projecting signs, which are prohibited in sign area two. And that's the uh, reason for the request on the uh, tour wall signs is they do stick out farther than the 12 inches. Those are number three? Well, those are four, five, and, four, and, four, five, four right? and five. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Okay. So how are they protruding? Yeah, what, how are they? Sticking out, Tim, what, are they on like some posts or? They're on the canopies, I believe. Well, they're on the canopy. But this says it's on EFIS. The canopies project out five feet. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions for Mr. Twin? The petitioner is still here? Dan Matulo with Public Storage. The two additional signs that we're requesting are, are wayfinding signs. There's one over the office and one over the loading area. And so these are non-illuminated signs, um, nine inches high, and, wow. and, and, and they're on the front face of the canopy versus on the building. And so that's, that's why the variance request. Oh, the, oh, I see. It says rental office yeah, and so it's a, loading. Yeah, it says rental oh, office okay. and loading. Okay. And it's just oh, on the canopy for each of the entries of the building. They're not and illuminated. Not They're nine inches high. Five feet. Okay. Right. Just way, way finding stuff. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Any questions for the petitioner? Yes. So the canopies are already there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. They will be when we build the building. It, right, it will be, yeah. right. And they're all, no no setback problems. They're all fine with the canopies being where they are. 
Yeah, this is the same building that you approved right. earlier. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks. Any other questions for the, for the petitioner? Is there a motion? Oh, Mr. Chase, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I just had the public storage, though, ones, the ones on the number one and two and three. Number two and three. Those are just ad adhered to the facade of the building itself. Correct? Yes, those are the just the letters like, and you know internally channel letters. Yeah, internally illuminated up uh, on the face of the building. Okay, I just want to make make sure. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the sign variances. Two of them are wayfinding signs that are, you know, when you get in the parking lot, it's good to know where you're going. Um, and it kind of fits the building, so it's hard to see on that corner. So I'll make a motion to approve uh, the sign variance as requested. There's been a motion made to approve by Mr. Chase. Is there support? Yeah, I'll, I'll support again. I, I, these kind of fall into that wayfinding category. Um, they're small. The overall sign area on that facade falls within the, the 100 square foot limit. Um, the sign itself isn't really um, projecting where you. You know, we've seen projecting signs on posts in the past. Really, they're they're adhered to a part of the building that's um, not necessarily within the strict envelope. Um, so, I will uh, be supporting the the variance. Any discussion on the motion? Not seeing all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. You got your signs. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, the last item uh, under other business is the reconsideration of sign variant 171009. It's a request to install a freestanding sign with electronic message center for religious institution, the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church at 814 North Campbell Road, with the variance to allow prohibited sign type electric electronic. Message center outside of sign area two, Mr. Twain. Um, well, you may recall that uh, in October, the Planning Commission uh, approved two of the requested variances uh, regarding this sign and denied uh, the electronic message center portion of it. Uh, at November's meeting, which I did not attend, uh, the Planning Commission um, made a motion to reconsider the denial of the electronic message center. Um, portion of the requested variant. Um, uh, that motion was approved and therefore the, the sign request is back in front of you this evening uh, for your reconsideration. Any questions for Mr. Twing or any discussion about this reconsideration? I was absent from that meeting. I'm not I was absent from the first one and then chaired the second one. So. Okay. <laughs> Kind of picking it up as we go along. Okay. Well, um, does anybody was there anybody here that can comment on the reconsideration? Is there was there a reason for this to be brought up, Mayor? Well, I think for me, um, the reason why I supported it. I mean, obviously on the first vote, or I. Um, I'm not sure how it went down. I can't exactly remember, but I was in favor of all the three variances proposed by the petitioner. And I think for me, I mean, this is my neighborhood, my neck of the woods. I drive up and down Campbell every day, taking my girls to school, uh, back and forth. And I think, you know, in my opinion, this body is empowered with making, I mean, we have obviously the say on all sign variances. And while I'm a strong proponent and steward of our electronic sign ordinance or our signed ordinance amendments and all the work that we've done. I feel that we can't always possibly capture every single constellation that is out there in an ordinance. And therefore, uh, when the petitioners came here asking for an electronic sign, I think for me, when I look at what their existing status quo is, uh, and I look at the, the neighborhood, the, the, you know, does this fit in the area? Are there any objections by neighbors? Uh, you go to the north, uh, you have Howie Glass there. Uh, although they don't have an electronic sign, my understanding is they would be allowed to have one based on the, um, the uh, sign ordinance. So, um, you know, for me, uh, it seems that um, I, d I don't see any harm being done. I do see a burden to the, um, to the petitioner not being able to 
you know, advertise or not advertise. I guess that's a bad word, but you know, it's it, it's a it's not in the business of raising money to market to bring people in their door. It's a different type of business where their main efficient, effective way of communication is through their their signage. And I think um, you know the uh, as I don't know how to put this as parishes and churches and religious institutions get older in age, their demographic gets older, uh, it is a burden to, to maintain, you know, assign and communicate, you know, through all mediums. So I felt that they, there was no harm. I felt that, you know, there was somewhat of a reasonable hardship. And then I felt that, you know, given the uniqueness of this geography and in juxtaposition to other properties in the area and what they're allowed to do, I didn't, I didn't see any harm. But um, that was where my head was at. If we were going to kick off this conversation. Thank you. Any other comments on this before we invite the petitioner up? Is the petitioner here? Okay. <clears throat> Your name, please. My name Sir? is uh, Stephen Schwegel. I am the <coughs> council president at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, and this is my wife Judy, um, also my architect who put together the presentation. First, let me thank you for reconsideration. Uh, it's that vitally important to uh, our church that we uh, took that effort to try and, and come before you again tonight. Uh, and I, I just thanks for the reconsideration, a chance to uh, provide the information that we put together to show or try to convince you, if, if that's a better word, of the hardships that uh, our church would uh, be subject to if, if we can't uh, get any electronic sign. So some of this information might be repeated, but we have a couple different um, commission members who were here, were here in October and not in November. So bear with me. Uh, I spoke to you in October regarding our request for three variances for a replacement sign in front of our church. Uh, we were pleased that we were granted the first two variances, but disappointed we were denied approval of the third variance to, an allow, to allow an electronic messaging sign after abiding by Robert's rules of order, whereby a motion can be reconsidered, I am here tonight representing our congregation to respectfully request that you reconsider that motion to deny us a variance for an electronic sign. When I spoke here back in October, regretfully I did not fully understand that the criteria for granting a variance depended on a demonstration of hardship. I was here again in November, and I'd like to further discuss the variance this evening by explaining the hardships that the church will suffer if the variance is still denied. First, our sign contract contractor has informed us that the current 22-year-old sign is functionally obsolete and therefore needs to be replaced rather than repaired. It is broken and deteriorating, and all the sign companies we spoke with will not guarantee a retrofit into the existing base since most new signs these days tend to be electronic. It would be beyond our financial means to completely replace the sign base and foundation in addition to the sign itself for any other type of sign except an LED messaging sign as proposed that does fit on the existing base. Even if we were able to replace it with a new manual lettering sign, given the distance from the road with the deep city easement landscaping and public sidewalk of Good Shepherd, Sign company advice and experience tells us that there is no other type of sign that can be effectively seen by vehicle traffic other than an LED sign, even if the messages never change. The old sign was effective decades ago when the road was narrow, narrower and traffic was slower, but that has changed. Additionally, the size of our current sign is larger and brighter than a new LED sign, which will be smaller and has adjustments for lowering its brightness and automatically dims at night, unlike the extremely bright and blinding farmer's market sign so close to the road. As our submitted affidavit states, our sign would be respectful of our surrounding neighbors and community and would be used for church events along with directing residents of Royal Oak to city and community events. I want to address the issue of an ordinance is an ordinance and the resist and reluctance rather to grant a variance. We understand how you might be hesitant to opening the door to future challenges of this ordinance. However, I would point out that the situation with Good Shepherd is extremely unique with exceptional circumstances peculiar to our property. 
being that we are surrounded by various buildings that are allowed, yet we are not. I do not believe any other business or church could argue our same points nor hardships. The granting of the first two variances, although very much appreciated, but grouped with the denial of the third variance, does not provide us with the means of getting our message any closer to the traveling community. I am aware that your job is to uphold an ordinance, but by definition, the word variance means to vary from the ordinance, just as with the first two ordinances. Last month when I spoke here, one of you mentioned concerns about the sign being too close to the road. Good Shepherd's current sign, also where the new sign would be as well, is 40 feet from the city curb, which means to actually read it, traveling at 35 miles per hour from the two lanes going north, or even further away from the two lanes going south, vehicles are a good 90 feet from the sign. You simply cannot read a message limited to only 92 characters composed of three inch letters from possibly 50 to 90 feet away, which is close to one third of a football field, traveling at 35 miles per hour. Second, it is important for you to understand a location issue, issue that was not brought up the first time I spoke. You are aware that Good Shepherd is considered just, got your, just outside of Area 2, yet the only two buildings on either side of us are inside Area 2 and allowed an LED messaging sign, including businesses across the street from the church also allowed an LED sign. The northern boundary of our parking lot goes right up to a business, Howie Glass. What I did not mention back in October is that for years we have been leasing a portion of our parking lot to Howie Glass for their customer parking because they do not have adequate parking on their own property for employees and customers. They pay us a rental fee each month for the use of our parking lot, which places us in a contract for commercial activity with the business in Area 2. For this very reason of leasing parking to a business in Area 2, we feel we should at least be considered equal to Howie Glass as being allowed to have an LED sign. Third, as to hardship, because the current sign is so old and deteriorating, it has become almost impossible for any member of our congregation to operate. The physical limitations of our mostly older church members means that we really cannot change the current sign's manual lettering ourselves. The sign we now have has a large, heavy, protective vandal shield that has to be unlocked, lifted up, and propped open to even begin altering the lettering, usually done by a contractor or our handyman. If we wanted to rotate messages, this would need to be done on a weekly basis, and that includes winter time and freezing temperatures, like today. <clears throat> because it is such a costly burden, it just never gets changed. A newer, non-electronic sign would have the same burdensome features, or worse, be unchangeable. A new electronic sign would eliminate this hardship and other issues for our older congregation. Fourth, the lack of effective signage could very well result in practical difficulties and or hardships that go a lot deeper than mere inconvenience or monetary concern for the church. Most importantly, our church hosts our Beacon of Hope food pantry, which provides supplementary food assistance to low-income citizens, including the elderly. The church belongs to TFAP, the federally funded emergency food assistance program that helps supplement the diets of low-income Americans, including the elderly, by providing them with emergency food and nutrition assistance at no cost. TFAP provides free food and administrative funds directly to our church. Our more recent food pantries have seen a significant drop in families from about 100 families down to about 30. And if we fall below a certain number of participants, which we are close to doing, we will lose the external TFAP subsidy aid, meaning no food pantry. Other churches in our region which provide these same types of services have seen a significant increase in participants with the installation of electronic signage. Many of the TFAP clients have no access to the internet or cell phones or other communication methods and rely on visual messages such as signs or word of mouth for information. Good Shepherd serves a much larger regional community than just its Royal Oak congregation members. A new LED sign can allow us to get the word out to those families in need and to accomplish our mission of helping our community in this most important and life-saving way. 
We feel that the ordinance restrictions unreasonably prevent Good Shepherd from using our property in the way it has always been intended, and that is to serve our community. For instance, this summer, we had no way to let our community know about our vacation Bible school for children. So we made an A-frame poster and put it on the front lawn. It was there one day, and Royal Oak Police came by and gave us a warning to remove the sign as we had placed it on the city easement for visibility. As a result, that program failed. I need to know. Holly Glass is a 105-year-old family-owned business and Church of God of Prophecy, a very small and old church, are on either side of us, both inside Area 2 and permitted to have electronic signs, and both extremely unlikely to ever install an electronic sign. We cannot serve if people do not know what we can offer, and without this sign, we are severely handicapped in communication. This is another reason for a variance to this ordinance. The unfair placement of our church to surrounding mm. properties, which, in addition to the glass business and the very small church, also include a very old auto repair, a vacated office building, and a small takeout restaurant, placing Good Shepherd within a commercial area, yet we are the only ones not in Area 2. Just to show the need for Good Shepherd to our community, our doors are open in excess of 75 hours a week to members and also non-members in groups that we host for their needs. We have such a mutual trust with these groups that they have an entrance key to the church as opposed to Church of God of Prophecy, which according to their own website is open six and a half hours a week and offer absolutely no community involvement. But they can still are in area two and allowed to have an electronic sign. Churches in all cities are replacing old signs with newer messaging technology. This is the way churches are heading, and we are merely asking for permission to keep up with the times. For instance, Royal Oak Church of Christ on Cam 11 Mile, Woodlawn Church on Rochester Road, St. John's Episcopal on 12 Mile in Woodward, First Congregation on Crooks Road, Unity on Crooks Road, Guardian Angels on 14 Mile Road, and scores of others in our neighboring communities, communities in Madison Heights, Troy, Berkeley, and Clawson all have LED messaging signs. We are just asking to join them in reaching out to our community. As to another criteria for consideration of a variance, a new LED messaging sign would not negatively alter the essential character of the area. Quite the opposite, it would modernize this very old part of town. Five pictures. <clears throat> The top left picture is Holly Glass. You can see a couple cars parked right next to it. That is our parking lot, which goes right up to Holly Glass. They are at Area 2 and allowed an LED sign. Top right is the Church of God of Prophecy, who is also in Area 2, a stone's throw from our church, uh, who is only open six and a half hours a week and no community involvement, yet they're in Area 2 and allowed an electronic sign. Bottom left is an extended, expanded view of our parking lot from our church right up to Holly Glass. Again, they're using our parking lot uh, for customers and employees, and we are actually physically touching each other, and they're allowed a sign, and we are not. Across the street is the uh, old auto care business, who is also in Area 2 and allowed a sign, and right across the street is our church right there, and we are not. The few residential neighbors affected say they have no problem with the church putting in a new LED sign as long as we are respectful. We have already submitted an affidavit signed by our pastor and myself stating that we will comply with all ordinance requirements as to the sign's operation. In addition, the new sign will be less bright than our current very bright fluorescent sign and dimming at dusk. We are just asking for this variance and a chance to move our church into a more modern world the same as downtown Royal Oak wants to do. Additionally, if you check the Next Door Red Run, a website for neighborhoods to communicate with each other, area residents are very supportive of the new sign and confused as to why we have been denied the variance. I have sub submitted to you some of the comments directly from this neighborhood site omitting names. There are no other LED messaging signs in Royal Oak. 
on Campbell Road between 11 and 13 mile roads, and it is extremely unlikely there ever will be any in this particular area. So in our case, there is no problem of saturation or, prolifer or, pro or proliferation of too many signs, ordinance abuse, harm, uh, pollution, or deterioration of the community. A new sign can only spark new interest and show that Good Shepherd is a vibrant and active church with caring ministries and full of life, unlike the tired sign that currently represents us. It's important to understand that churches can no longer just depend on their congregations to sustain them. We are borrowing from our investment funds monthly to keep the church running, <clears throat> and our treasurer, es treasurer estimates we have three to five years before our doors close to our congregation, to the food pantry, to all self-help groups, along with our surrounding community outreach programs. Just like commercial businesses that are permitted to have electronic signs, <clears throat> we need to reach out and be a part of the larger surrounding areas and reach out to the younger demographics of our area. We also need to do fundraising events to help with church costs, again, reaching out with a new LED sign. Mayor Fournier, it's not advertising, it's promotion. I was hoping there that was the word you were, you were looking for. We don't want to advertise. We also need to do fundraising, it's, uh, fundraising events to help with church costs. First Congregational Church on Crooks Road, for example, raises significant and essential funds through its annual rummage sale, which it announces on its LED sign and draws shoppers from around the area. Without a messaging sign, this event would never raise the necessary funds that it does. It would be a financial hardship for Good Shepherd if we were to be denied the opportunity to help fund our mission and operations through the use of an LED sign to send out our own messages. I believe we have presented evidence to show that if this ordinance is applied strictly, unnecessary hardship and practical difficulties will result to Good Shepherd, including closing its doors, and that a lesser relaxation than we are asking for would not give relief to the church or be fair and just concerning properties directly around us. A variance would do substantial justice to Good Shepherd as well as to other property owners in the immediate area. Pertaining to the variance ordinance, section 13, amendment to section 607-15, I believe we have met all criteria listed in A through H particularly hardship with the possibility of Good Shepherd closing its doors in a few years after nearly three-fourths of a century of community ministry if we do not increase membership and fundraise. In conclusion, the LED message, messaging sign is a next generation sign. While the manual letter sign was state of the art 25 years ago, it is obsolete in today's world. The LED sign will catch the eye of folks traveling past the church. The programming features enable the church to be a good neighbor, respectful of city ordinances. Attracting younger readers is a feature that the previous generation sign does not do. In the digital age we live in, a static sign will not reach the target audience like a technologically relevant sign, which can be used for public service announcements to build community and citizenship. In addition to increasing membership, we feel a new sign would most certainly add class and modernization to a very old section of town, making Good Shepherd stand out, giving a stately 67-year-old iconic church a much-needed facelift along with updating the neighboring area. In summary, with the community backing us, along with the commercial rental of our parking lot to our neighboring business, being surrounded by commercial businesses, having a functionally obsolete and deteriorating sign that is a hardship to change, the need to increase our food pantry families to maintain our government's food subsidy for the needy, and the hardship that it would create for the church and community if we do not, the fact that we cannot retrofit any other type of sign, the possible closing of our church without a means to reach out to our community, and the fact that we feel we have met all criteria required for a variance, which is A through H of the signed ordinance. For all these reasons and more, we respectfully request that the Planning Commission, as a signed Board of Appeals, reconsider its motion to deny us the variance for a new sign and grant the variance. One last thought. On the City of Royal Oak's own website, it says, the vision of the City Commission is to be a dynamic balance of progressive vision and traditional values 
offering an inviting premier and diverse community for all. We feel this also describes the vision of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church as well. And I'll be glad to entertain any questions and thank you for your time. I know it was a lot, but this is our last shot. So I wanted to cover as much as I could. Thank, thank you. Back to the commission. Mr. Twing, I have a question. Um, I'm looking at what I think is the city's official sign ordinance or sign area designation map. Um, and it does not appear that the property to the south of Good Shepherd is in zone two. What am I missing? So this would be the church. And their map shows that I think this site is in sign area two. But that's not. Well, I believe that's the old map. Oh. Go down to the legend if there's four sign areas, that's the old map. You have your pointer? There are yeah, four signs. There should only be three sign areas. Like, could we get a current map up on our website, please? I got this from the commission. Uh, Kevin, do you have Kevin? Uh, I forget his title. Yes. I'm exasperated. Because he had to pull this up for me, so it was not a website. So now I'll ask why is it that the property to the south is in sign area two? My only guess would be, without without going and looking, is that they may have been um, in, in a different designation or they got a variance granted to them for a sign, and rather than it being, but I'm guessing as to why that property was included. Well, if, it, if they got a variance, they wouldn't, they'd still be not sign area two. Well, they, they may have put it in based on the fact that it got a variance and rather than making an electronic message center non-conforming under a new code, they stuck it in sign area too, but I'd have to go back and look. Well, but they don't have an electronic sign there. No. no. They may not have put it in. Without looking, I don't know. And and, and frankly, it's irrelevant. I yeah. Mean, whether 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 there's property on either side in a sign area or not, not a relevant issue. You, you draw a boundary at some point, even if it's across the street, even if it's surrounded. At some point, you draw a boundary, so it's not really relevant. So everything, everything else was approved. We're just concentrating on the, the little message board part. That's Motion correct. by Godek and supported by Commissioner Douglas was to deny the last part of that motion, which was for the electronic sign, which is not <coughs> allowed in this area. Okay. Right. You denied the last portion, but I believe if, if you were considering to approve it, I think the other two variances are open as well. So we should if we're going to make a motion. And you can, uh, if you were to consider granting an electronic message center, you may not want to grant a bigger sign. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember that particular meeting in October, and the this item was directly after an item where we denied a prohibited sign in a in a given sign area. Um, and it's, it's, it's difficult, I think, for us as a board to, unless there's specific hardships, to, to look at situations differently. Um, so I, I think that's, that's one of the big reasons that we responded the way we did at, at the previous meeting is it's, it's a prohibited sign in the area. And I think as, as a board, we've been pretty consistent in sticking with the intent of the ordinance with the exception of wayfinding difficulties or extreme difficulties with strict adherence to the ordinance. That's my memory also, and I would agree with that. We had denied the uh, sign on 4th and uh, the attorney uh, that was prohibited as well, yes. and that was on the same agenda, which is why I, I voted for the motion to approve the two variances and deny the electronic messaging. That's my memory as well. The mayor. Yeah, I think at that time, I mean, the petitioner, in my opinion, also didn't do a good enough job articulating their um, hardships. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, that's also a new variable, even though I was supportive before, I think. Um, you know, I hope this board considers uh, that new information as well.
Is there a motion? Well, I will move to I, I, not having been there for the other meeting and just kind of going off of what I've heard here tonight and looking at the the waivers that were granted for the one foot seven and the nine foot nine. I too agree that this board has been pretty consistent with the message boards and I do recall some other institutions that got reconsidered and, and were granted those message boards, some of which he mentioned in his speech. So I think the it's a it's a tough call and I I just have to agree with the mayor on this. I I I'll uh, I'll move that we uh, uh, adopt the or not adopt. What am I approve the uh, the sign variance for the message board and keep the other two variances the way they were support. as previously proved. There's a motion by Mr. Chase and support by the mayor to um, to maintain the original approval of the first two variances and add the approval of the electronic message center. Is there a discussion on that motion? Ms. Douglas. Yes. Um, so we've seen examples of, in fact, in recent months, examples of um, businesses that were located in an area that, in fact, had no sign ordinance whatsoever. In fact, we had one here uh, tonight wasn't the the nursing home isn't that the case that that's I mean that's not in a sign area and yet it's a business and I mean it's, it's reasonable to think that the business needs a, a sign I don't, I don't dispute that but I think my goal would be whenever I'm approving a sign in a an, an area that doesn't allow any signage at all is to keep the signage as minimal as possible. Um, I think it's reasonable to allow um, the church to build a new sign um, and to give them some, I mean, because it's not a sign area, basically the sign can be whatever we want it to be. Um, however, the city commission uh, over the course of the past year had uh, lengthy discussions about <clears throat> electronic signs. Um, and specifically voted to allow them in a designated sign area too. I voted against that. Um, I don't like electronic signs. I, we have, we, we've had them in the past, we've approved them in the past, but the ordinance has changed. Um, and while I'm bound by the existing ordinance to allow digital signs in certain areas, I, I have to be true to myself and my beliefs and I, I I don't want them in our city. I want as few of them as possible, um, and I have to. I have to, as I say, be true to my beliefs and, and vote against this. And you do wonderful work, and, and I acknowledge that. Um, um, and but I, I, I'm sorry, but um, the ordinance is clear. Um, my stand on it has been clear, and I have to vote against it. Any other discussion? I'm going to agree with Ms. Douglas. I, too, uh, do not like the electronic signs. I'm going to stick with the, my original vote on this. I was supportive of Mr. Mr. Godick's position as well. Unfortunately, he's not here this evening, and I, I know in the past he feels the same way, so I will not be supporting this motion. Um, I, I don't see the hardship here um, at all, and I, I don't... I, I agree with Ms. Douglas. I think the church does phenomenal work. But um, I don't think a sign is going to make or break the longevity of this church. It's been there 67 years now, and I think it's going to be there uh, still. So I'll be voting against this. Is there any other discussion? Mayor. Yeah, I'll just reiterate. I mean, I appreciate and understand, you know, and again, I have similar sentiments about, you know, in general, about electronic signs in our community. Um, but, you know, I think in this particular case, again, I'll go back and I'll say the, the, the features of this geography are, are unique. The setbacks are unique. The city easement, the size of it from the road is unique. Um, I think the petitioner isn't going to, I mean, they've agreed not to run messages and cartoons and things like that. Uh, I think that um, it makes sense. Um, you know, given, I, I happen to believe, yeah, there are, I mean, it's not the gravest hardship we've ever seen, but there is a, a hardship in my opinion. So, um, 
I'll be supporting the motion. Obviously, I supported it. I'll be voting yes on it. And, um, you know, like I said, it's one of these circumstances, I think, that, you know, is meant for uh, the Planning Commission to really look at as far as a variance is concerned, uh, given the uniqueness of the area. Thank you, Mary. Mayor, um, any other discussion? We'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. The motion fails. Madam Chair, I'd like to submit a motion to approve um, the uh, first set of variances um, to install a freestanding st sign at 814 North Campbell waving one foot seven inches from the maximum permitted six foot freestanding sign height and waving nine feet nine inches of the minimum required 10 foot freestanding sign setback. Okay, there's been a motion uh, by Ms. Douglas. Is there support? Support. Support by Mr. Kluster. Any discussion on this motion? That's just to give them the first two of the three, correct? Right. Yeah, I'll just say that I think that all three would be great, but I guess uh, as a second option, I'll be supporting this one. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously for the original A letter A and B of the uh, variances. <coughs> okay, um, that's the last item on the agenda. Is uh, there any comments from the board, Mr. Twing? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Support. All those in favor say aye. 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 aye.